promised you I would get more videos of Jim Kovaleski this year. I am back two weeks later. We're actually helping him get the sweet potatoes out. We're gonna be doing some of the top dressing. I might even film a little bit of going to get the compost, putting it down, talking about the actual harvest and what we got back from those sweet potatoes. Maybe talk about what we're planting this year. So all kinds of good stuff coming from you at Jim's house today. Hold tight. You getting some vines out of here? Yep. Find little golden nuggets buried in there or what? Oh yeah, some good stuff, man. Mm. Oh hey dude, we haven't seen you in a minute. What are you doing? <laughs> What's growing on? What's growing on, dude? Alright, Ian's being a little quiet here this morning, but this is Chef Ian and he cooks when we do traveling projects and I think he's got something in mind. Next week we're gonna be working out of town and he's got a sweet potato leaf curry up his sleeve or something, I can tell you right now. <laughs> what are you working on, bro? Oh man, the menu is still undecided. Oh, all right. All right, we got an empty truck, man. Go to your room. So I had about 50 comments. Pete, the leaves are edible. I mentioned that in the video I made here last time. Yes, we know the sweet potato leaves are edible. There's no way Jim could eat all these leaves. These leaves aren't marketable. Um, most of these leaves get just composted and put back in the alley as they get broken down, um, turn into good compost, and they come back to the garden. So uh, did you weigh the harvest from the other side, Jim? I didn't weigh it, but I estimated by the number of boxes I get. Okay. You know, they're about a bushel. I weigh about, you know, 50 pounds each. So I think I got like 10 of those. And I think uh, I'd say half were, you know, good ones. You know, really nice ones like this. So about 250 pounds of clean ones, 250 yep. pounds of uglies. Yep. Nice. Yeah, so that's a better ratio because it used to be like 75% uglies lately. But smaller production, a lot of tiny ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you've already started to put some compost down as a top dress over there? Oh yeah, and planted. Okay. So I got that going on. But yeah, there's a lot that size. But I mean, they're great, great roasting. I've been selling them that way. You just roast them up with the skin on and eat them. Nice. Great. Got compost? Where's your compost come from? It right there. What They'll, do you mean? That doesn't look like compost. City will come and pick that up and take it into a big pile and chip it up. And then about six months later, I go get it. I'm gonna go get a load right now. Right now? Right now. Let's do this. Okay. All right. So this is just an absolutely amazing resource if you live in the city of Newport Ritchie and you know, not only will these guys load your truck for free, these guys will deliver it to your house for free. Um, you know, Jim just doesn't want a huge pile sitting out in his backyard, so it works out much better to get that stuff in his truck. But over here on this side is all of the yard waste before it gets chipped. And this is, you know, six months to a year old yard waste that's been chipped, that's getting loaded in Jim's truck. So you can see this is well broken down mulch. I would say the only downside to this, there's a little bit of trash in it. Sometimes some glass, sometimes some plastic, who knows what. It's free, who can complain about that? Here's the guy loading it for free. Whoa. Look at it steaming. It's steaming. It's hot. That's why there's no weed seed.
And it's free. It's free. It's all part of our city tax. And I brought the file where I just found the potatoes. That's what this becomes. Right back to me. And then you grow the potatoes and the veggies out of it. You tell me you might be getting some of your old sweet potato leaves back right here? Yep. Woo! Yeah, we're full, over full. All kind right. of leaning on that side, isn't it? I see that. All right. All right, guys, so it's almost 9.30. We've got about 95% of those vines up. You can see the rest of uh, Jim's mom's front yard is up. We've actually got a full load of compost sitting out there. We're gonna be doing some top dressing. And you can kind of see the, the potatoes kind of scattered throughout here in the front yard. And we're gonna get all those picked up and put it in a wheelbarrow, kind of give you guys a guesstimation on weight and what we actually got. And you can see the little piles kind of laying all around the driveway and then kind of sporadic throughout the beds. The only thing that's left in this bed is turmeric and moringa. And I got the truck all the way backed up in here. Hey, you got taters? Got, got taters. All right, so there's the last of the vines, kind of doing that rolling method. Got a couple of pieces left to put up in the truck. And, oh. We're gonna be putting compost down here soon, so hold tight. Jim says this papaya is seven years old. Literally has like a 18 inch, 24 inch trunk. Oh, still got, still got fruit. Dude, you digging up artifacts over here? Hey, no Irish jokes. No Irish jokes, hey. What do we got, what do we got? Cross the road. My theory here is that, so when these fines, the really fine particles are on top in this moss, when they dry out, it becomes like uh, peat moss, and we can't wet it again. But I found that if you water it in, so that's lower, and then all the woody stuff comes up to the top, and I think you're actually moving, um, you know, beneficial organisms down there in that steam, you know, and you're letting them die. And then it acts like a wet blanket on the on top of the planting ground. So usually I dump a wheelbarrow, spread it out, water it in, and now I ain't gonna be able to keep up with these guys. That's a good thing, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what are you saying, you can't water fast enough? You can't water and spread it out fast enough. Maybe one of us does one and one does the other. <laughs> all right, all right. So you can see I'm putting maybe two inches down. So about a two inch layer of the compost, yep. and then you're watering it in. Yep. So your next step is plant, that's all you're gonna do. Well, I'll go ahead and you can, I don't know if you can see where there's kind of woody rows. I'll rake this, some of this mulchy stuff into where my paths are, okay. and that's where I get the raised path. Um, and then I plant. And by raking it, you know, I usually do like a three foot on each side of the path, so that kind of lays out my bed for me as I rake it. And then I try to make it so, because I'm watering by hand, so I drag hose, and so I try to make it all um, hose draggable too without getting a plan.
Whoa, would you look at that? Perfect timing. We're just wrapping up. Everything's getting watered in. It's already starting to rain. Hey, got rain? Give me a pounder, give me a pounder. Pounder, oh, ramp. Oh, oh, oh. Got rain? Give me a pounder, give me a pounder. Oh, all right. Last but not least, let's go! Oh, oh, give me a pound of dirt, give me a pound of dirt, give me a pound of dirt, oh, all right. What do you got, what do you got? Bring it up, bring it up. Apparently it's a black, black mission, right? Well, that's the Taylor thing, the thing. I bought it as an issue, though. Serious? Pretty good. Woo! Yup, you guys saw that, right? What do you guys know about the big hat with the solar panel and the fan? This hat is awesome. This company reached out to me about two months ago and they saw I wore sombreros and they're like, you guys need to try my hat. This is called the Cool Breeze hat. I'll put a link in the description down below. You can actually get a discount with the Green Dreams code. So drop that if you decide to order one. I absolutely love this thing. It's got a little vent hole in the back to let the air out. So it's blowing onto my cool bald head and letting it out the backside. Game changer, so cool breeze, that's what's up. Well, this is the first um, generation of uh, soil block, so that's been getting in over there. So, you know, I do, um, you know, all the brassicas, kale, mustards, um, you think some collards. There's the, what do you call it, huckerai turnips. Beets I do in these inch and a half blocks. Oh, I should get, I had to get my knife, but. Normally you'd cut them out of there? Yeah, okay. and then pop them in. We got, nice. got a little leg yet, I didn't get them out here quick enough. Some scallions, um, and then all the lettuces. They didn't really germinate this year very well. Um, but we were just talking about that. Not sure if it was bad seed, too hot. Or too hot. Combination, okay. Because I did put some in the refrigerator and they did a little better. Okay. I mean, I remember Roberto from uh, Sweetwater used to do that. So Pro tip. Okay. Yeah, especially, you know, you're talking you know, 90 degrees and, you know, only get down to 70 at night or 75. All right, Jim, glad to be of service to you. We're gonna oh, have to come back when you're planting next. Yeah, I can't say how much this helped me out. Awesome. Yeah, definitely something I needed. So maybe a couple of weeks, we'll bang out a couple of loads again? Sure, right. yeah, it should be about time because I'll have that next generation started. Awesome. Oh, is that what's left, guys? About it. That's, the, that's, that's all she wrote. Woo. We use the whistle over there. Pretty much. All right, Jim, keep it up. We'll see you soon. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, guys. So video number two with Jim Kovaleski this fall. We've kind of finished getting up the rest of the sweet potato vines. We've added some fertility. He's planting out the far side of the yard. I'll be back for planting. I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. I know you guys love seeing Jim. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Make sure you hit that bell, pound that bell to stay notified. Most importantly, pound dirt.